Lord, send it. Well, this we know. There's a bomb in Gilead. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To heal, to heal the sin sick soul. There's a bomb in Gilead, somebody. God knows what you need. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is a bomb in Gilead. Hey, West Marisol in Chester, Pennsylvania. Chester, Pennsylvania in the house, ladies and gentlemen. There's healing for your sorrows. Don't be discouraged. God is going to show up. Hey, Judy Witherspoon in Chester, Pennsylvania. Reverend Ruby Witherspoon in Chester, Pennsylvania. There's healing for your spirit. Hallelujah. You just trust God. You just trust God. You just trust God. Lord, send the healing. Greetings from Pennsville, New Jersey. Thank you. Hallelujah. There is a bomb in Gilead. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. He was wounded for our transgressions. The word of God says so. A bomb in Gilead. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. He was bruised for our iniquities. Come on, somebody. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. Hallelujah. We're talking about Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about Jesus. With his stripes, we are healed. There is a bomb in Gilead. There is a bomb in Gilead. Reach out. It's here. It's here. The healing is here. Reach out. Reach out. Reach out in Tanzania. Reach out in North Korea. Reach out in China. Reach out in America. Reach out in Asia. Reach out in Europe. There's a bomb in Gilead. Call upon the name of Jesus. We welcome you to the worship where I am church. Back to basics online church where we take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nation. Hallelujah. 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 There's a bomb in Gilead. Sing it one more time. If you believe that God is a healer, sing it from your belly. Bomb in Gilead to heal the soul. There's healing, healing for your soul. Healing for your soul. We welcome all of you who are on live with us, online live with us at the Back to Basics Online Church. Healing for your soul. We got Richard Smallwood, our special guest singing in the background. There's healing. There's a bomb in Gilead. Somebody's been hurt today. The devil's been oppressing you. But there is a healing. Tell your family members, hold on. Tell them God's got this. Healing for your soul. There's no situation that God cannot control. Earth has no sorrows that heaven cannot control. There's healing 
healing for your soul. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Healing for your soul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's healing for your soul. We welcome you once again to the worship where I am church. The name's been recently changed to the Back to Basics Online Church. Hallelujah. The Back to Basics Online Church. That even sounds good. Amen. We're going back to basics. We're cutting out all the frills and all the fringes and all the commercials. And we can get we get down to the nitty gritty. We get down to Jesus. We're getting down to the word of God. We're getting down to prayer. We're getting down to laying hands on the sick. We're getting down to casting out demons. Amen. We're getting away from the frills. Amen. We're getting back to where God wants us to be. Ladies and gentlemen, the church is getting back to where God wants us to be. We've been so lost out there in a world of confusion. Amen. In a world of commercialism. Amen. Trying to keep up with the Joneses. Trying to keep up with First Baptist. Amen. And, and the church has lost its way. So many people have been discouraged by the church, disconnected, disfranchised by the church. And so God has raised up back to basics ministries online church to get you right back on track. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you accept what God is doing, this this awesome ministry, when you accept what God is doing and yield to the Holy Spirit and trust God, we're saying have faith in God. Have faith in God. When, when you realize that you don't have to fight that traffic and drive among those demonic drivers to get to a building and to fight your way uh, into the, your favorite pew where you can sit comfortably. No, no, no. That is not the church, ladies and gentlemen. The church is Jesus said wherever two or more are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. Let's accept that. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we gather together. Some are coming from Pennsylvania, some from New Jersey, some from Georgia, some from California, some from Illinois, some from Connecticut. They're coming from all over this nation. And, and uh, we're sitting in different locations, but we come together in the name of Jesus and according to your word, Lord God, you said you are in our midst. And so we receive you, Holy Spirit. We receive you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and we enter into your courts with praise. We will say this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice for he has made us glad. We're broadcasting live on Facebook. We hope we're showing up well on Facebook right now. And uh, we will be broadcasting live on YouTube, Facebook, and a lot of other sources soon. We're just trusting God. God spoke to me, ladies and gentlemen, and this will bless your heart too. Because many of you are ministers out there and you're saying, am I reaching anybody? Is, is my ministry effective? Uh, is, is my family paying attention? Or, or is the community paying attention? Is my witness being received? But God spoke to my heart and said to me yesterday, son, he said, son, I'm not going to judge you on the number of books you write or the number of videos you produce or the number of countries you visit or the number of schools you set up or the number of textbooks you write. I'm not going to judge you on the number of people you bring into the kingdom of God. I'm not going to touch. I'm not going to judge you on the number of people you reach every Sunday morning or every Wednesday night via the internet or via your live broadcast. God said, I'm going to judge you on this. Did you obey me? Did you have faith in Jesus? Did you obey me? Did you do what I told you to do? Hallelujah. You know, ladies and gentlemen, that just took a big weight off me. Amen. I don't have to compete with a mega church. I don't have to answer any questions. How many followers you have? How many members you got in your church? What's your budget? See, that's the way the world thinks. That's the way the worldly church thinks. Amen. The church thinks that way. But it's not about how many followers you have. 
how many family members uh, attend service with you, how much money are you raising, uh, uh, how many hungry have you fed, how many uh, clothing drives have you uh, uh, sponsored. That is not what God has called us to do. God is saying, have you obeyed me? Have you been faithful to me? Did you receive Jesus? Did you receive what I've given you to do? And ladies and gentlemen, when you get that, when you get that in your spirit, that takes the pressure off having to be in a certain place at a certain time at 11 o'clock Sunday morning. Well, CP time, 1130, quarter of 12, just before the preacher preaches. Uh, but but uh, you don't have to uh, uh, wear yourself out. Uh, 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 break speed limits, risk your family's life trying to get to the church. Ladies and gentlemen, the church is where two or more are gathered in the name of Jesus. That's where he is. And ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about a powerful church. We're talking about a powerful church that if just you and your wife and children are online with me today, we are a powerful church. There's enough Holy Ghost power in our presence, ladies and gentlemen, that if your child is sick during this service, you can lay your hands on your child's head and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. I believe that's the kind of anointing God has on this ministry. Or if 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 you're caring for your mother or caring for your father or you're caring for a loved one and and and, and that person is rebelling against you and there's a demon in that person trying to rebel against you because you're the only person they can snap out against. You can lay hands on that person and cast that demon out. I command that you leave my Aunt Susie. I command that you leave my mother. Command that you leave my father. Get off the pre premises, devil. And I believe the devil will flee because we are the church. Ladies and gentlemen, God has instituted the church and there are people assembled in some churches, 5,000, 10,000, they're gathered and they believe that they have to be there at a certain time every Sunday morning. They have to have their notebooks open, taking notes. They've got to buy the CDs after church. They've got to buy the tickets. They've got to give in three or four offerings. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not the church. That is not the church that the Lord Jesus intended when he said, uh, at Caesarea Philippi in Matthew 16, 18, he said, on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Ladies and gentlemen, while people are going through uh, uh, the, the trying to explain the church and, and doing churchy things and, 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 and the church has become so worldly, they're missing the point. Jesus told Simon Peter, because you recognize me as the Messiah on this rock, on this kind of faith, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So if you're with us this morning and it's you and your wife and children or you and your mother, you and your, your husband, uh, you and your uh, uh, family or, or uh, uh, a group uh, under the trees in Kenya and by Mombasa, Kenya, Amen. We are the church and Jesus is in our midst. And as we worship him and open our hearts to him and trust him and trust the word of God, God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Already some listener, some, some listener, I don't know who you are, but already your stomach has been healed. You've been having stomach troubles in the name of Jesus. I command that you be healed. Thank you, Lord God. God, see, God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. <clears throat> Somebody uh, listening in right now has had a headache, a migraine, a headache, and now it's gone. In the name of Jesus, we command that those headaches not return. Jesus is the healer. Ladies and gentlemen, God is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There are a lot of people who want to come online for this Back to basics online church, but many are afraid. Many are, are, are caught up in what the their family will think or what the community will think or what the pastor down the street will think or what the choir members will think. And ladies and gentlemen, here's what's, here's what's happening. This is what's going on.
People are going there every Sunday. You've got to be there because the church has become your God. Listen to this. The church has become your idols. God said, thou shall have no other God before me. You have made First Baptist your God. You have made Second Pentecostal your God. You have made uh, 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 Providence Baptist your God. You have made Bethany Baptist your God. And, and God does not want you worshiping a building. Some of you will, will die for the pr preservation of that building rather than, rather than talk to your own family members about being born again. There are people going to church who reject Jesus' command to be born again. And so, ladies and gentlemen, God is trying to get the attention of people because we don't have much time. We don't have a whole lot of time to get it together, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have a whole lot of time. So uh, this day, God said, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation as your fathers did in the wilderness. This day, if you hear my voice, harden not your hearts. This day, get saved. You can get saved under a tree. You can get saved uh, out uh, in your lawn chair uh, with your cell phone, your, your smartphone, listening to this ministry. You can get saved, ladies and gentlemen, and you don't have to worry about uh, going back home frustrated, going back home uh, because people roll their eyes at you. Uh, you sat in somebody's pew and they didn't want you there. Uh, they, you, there were haters in the church. Ladies and gentlemen, these things shall not be. God is looking for worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So uh, let, let God revolutionize your life. Let God bring about a Holy Ghost explosion on the inside of you. Let God live inside of you. That's where he is. If you're born again, <clears throat> he lives inside of you. If you're not born again and you want to get saved, get saved today. Get saved today. The important thing is not to go to church. You don't have to go to church. The question is, Pastor, can I go to heaven without going to church? Yes, you can go to heaven without going to church. But let me specify that. You can go to heaven without going to church. If the church you, you're attending is not right and they're not preaching the gospel, you need to shake the dust off your feet and you need to get to a place where you can worship God. Even if you have to open your Bible at your kitchen table and praise God and worship him and seek God, God, where can I find other like-minded people to worship with them? God will honor you, ladies and gentlemen. You can get to heaven. There are a lot of people there are more people, more Christians not going to church today than there are people going to church because many Christians, their eyes are being open to the fact that the church has become big business. The church has become big business and God does not want the church to become a business organization. God wants the church to be that live organism that Jesus spoke into existence at Caesarea Philippi. He said, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Ladies and gentlemen, hell is trying to prevail against the body of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, but Jesus has given us power. We're talking about kingdom authority and, and, and that kingdom authority dwells in you. God has given you what the Bible calls exousia, authority. He said, in his name, we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If your wife gets sick, lay hands on her and she shall recover. The Bible says that if she looks at you cockeyed and funny, go ahead and do it anyhow. If she's really sick, she's going to accept what you're doing. Or if your child is sick and, 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 and you can't get that child to the hospital or to the doctor, you lay hands on that child in the name of Jesus and command that that child be healed. And that's all you got to do. And then wait on the Lord. See, by grace are we saved through faith. That not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. God has placed a gift on the inside of every one of us. He's planted his seed, ladies and gentlemen, on the inside of every believer. That is why you must be born again. That is why we urge you to get saved. 
get saved and stay saved. Because once you're saved, then God gives you the power to become a child of God. God gives you the power to cast out demons. God will give you power to recognize the devil's attack. God will give you power to protect your home. God will give you power to speak over your household. God will give you power to speak on your job. God will give you power to speak up against unrighteousness. God will give you power to live holy and righteous. Ladies and gentlemen, so we're talking about uh, a new paradigm. I wrote a book called A New Paradigm for the Church. Well, what do you mean a new paradigm? It's a new way of thinking about the church. It is not new. This is God's way of thinking about the church. We have just been thinking about the church the way the church has taught us to think. And the church's way of thinking is all goofed up. So let's do a new thing. Let's get back to basics. Let's get back to the Bible. Let's start reading our Bible. Let's start having a family altar. Let's gather our family together once a, once a week for about a half hour and read the Bible to your family and pray over your family. Pray over your children. After you finish helping them with their homework, pray over them. They got to direct them that they'll be strong in school, that they'll make the right choices and the right decisions. And ladies and gentlemen, this is how we build Christ Jesus in our households and in our families. Then we can take this nation back for Jesus. We can take this nation and other nations for Jesus when we go according to the way the scriptures uh, uh, teach us. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm not putting down the organized church. I'm just obeying God. God said, organize the back the basics online church and preach the gospel. He said, don't count heads. Don't count money. We don't beg for money. We don't count heads. How many members uh, came online this week? No, no. We just trust the Lord God. Hallelujah. We trust the Lord God. So all that is introduction and we welcome you. Hallelujah to the worship where I am church. Now we're going to pray for a special young lady uh, in, in a few moments. We're going to pray for a special young lady. Uh, a friend of mine, she was my first choir director when I uh, pastored in Chester many years ago. Her name is Reverend Judy Witherspoon. We're going to pray for Reverend Judy Witherspoon. We're going to pray for her mother, uh, Reverend Ruby Witherspoon, and her father, Pastor uh, Jeremiah Witherspoon of Temple Baptist Church. We're going to pray because the enemies come against that family. And uh, uh, Judy, I, I believe she would permit me to say this. Judy is learning how to use her new prosthetic leg. See, uh, there was a time when she they didn't think she'd walk again, but now she's getting the prosthetic leg and she's learning how to use it. And Judy's getting stronger and stronger. And so we're going to pray for her because we love you, Judy. And we're going to pray that God will bless you, bless your mom. And, and not only is she recovering and being restored, but she's also taking good care of her mom and dad. So Judy's a trooper. She's a soldier. But like every trooper and every soldier I know in the kingdom of God, we all need help. And so the Bible says, pray ye one for another. Amen. The strong ought to bear the burdens of the weak. And so as Judy has been standing in the gap for her mother and father, we're going to stand in the gap for her. Amen. Praise God. I invite you right now, wherever you are, wherever you are, even those who will hear this tape, this video at a later time, you 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 stop and pray for Judy right where you are, because God has a plan. Thank you, Pastor Carter. We're all here with you today. My mother, my father, and myself, we're all here in the living room listening to you today. Excuse me for interrupting you, but I wanted to tell you we appreciate your prayers and your ministry, and we want to encourage you to keep on keeping on, and God bless you and your entire family. Praise God. Hallelujah. That was Reverend Judy Witherspoon, and she she uh, just shared with us. She said she and her mother and her father are in the living room listening to this broadcast right now. Uh, Reverend Ruby, Ruby Witherspoon, God bless you, dear. We love you. We love you. And Reverend Jeremiah Witherspoon, Pastor Witherspoon, we love you. You all have labored long in the city of Chester, Pennsylvania. God's not finished with you yet. Now be encouraged as, as the, the, the body of Christ, the family of God. We enter into agreement to pray that God's going to give you a mighty breakthrough. And he's God's going to God's going to 
cast those demons out that have oppressed your family and God's going to bless you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we thank you for Judy and her mother and father. We thank you for the years of labor they have provided in the kingdom and have how you have used them to help build Christ in people in Chester, Pennsylvania and the surrounding communities. Now, Lord God, we're asking in the mighty name of Jesus that you'll pour out a blessing upon this household. Lord, so great that they cannot even receive it all. Lord God, you said a thousand shall fall at their side and 10,000 at their right hand, but no, no plague shall come nigh their dwelling, Lord God. Uh, no sickness shall dwell among them. So Lord God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you stretch forth your hands and, 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 and God, we lay hands on Judy Witherspoon in the name of Jesus. We lay hands on her mother, Reverend Ruby Witherspoon. We lay hands on Pastor Jeremiah Witherspoon, and we pronounce your blessings upon them, Lord God. We cast out all sickness and disease. And Lord God, we thank you that you're building Judy up, that she can learn how to walk on her new prosthetic leg, God, that she'll not only walk, but she'll run through a troop, leap over a wall, Hallelujah. And we command every need that they have to be met. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We bind you by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we command in Jesus name that you take your hands off this family. And God, we thank you. We love you. We bless you. And we praise you. And we give you the glory and the honor. And let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. All over Pennsylvania, New Jersey, uh, Connecticut, uh, Illinois, Texas, and in other places, people are saying, amen. We pray the prayer of agreement. Amen. God said, wherever two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. And so we say, Witherspoons, wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Wait on the Lord. Linda Barrett said it is done. That's coming from Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. It is done. Hallelujah. Praise God. West says it is done. Amen. Andrew Mack, Andy Mack in Connecticut said it is done. And believers all over the world are saying it is done. So Witherspoons, get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your blessing. Hey, hey, Pastor Jeremiah Witherspoon, here's a word for you from the Lord. That which Satan meant for harm, God is going to turn to good. Pastor Jeremiah Witherspoon, here's the word of the Lord for you, the father of the household. That what the devil meant for harm against your family, God will turn it to good. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel like shouting. I feel like shouting. I feel like shouting glory. Hallelujah. For what God is doing in the Witherspoon family. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, glory to God. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness that the Lord is good? Can I get a witness? Somebody ought to say witness. Somebody ought to say witness. Somebody said glory to God and amen in the chat window. Hallelujah. Glory to God and amen. We welcome you to the Back to Basics Online Church a special church that God has created, amen, for, for those who cannot get out to church, for those who are sick and shut in. It's a church for caregivers. God doesn't want you to sit home all alone without uh, any worship. So we worship him right where we are. We come to him. Some of you don't go to church anymore. Some of you are fed up with the church. Some of you have been hurt by the church some of you have been abused by the church. I say to you, forgive the church. Forgive the church members. Forgive those who have uh, misused you and abused you. Forgive those who have persecuted you. Forgive those who have lied on you. Forgive those who have robbed you. Forgive them. Don't harbor any bitterness toward them, ladies and gentlemen. Release them. Release them. Release them. Don't be angry with them. Forgive them. Ladies and gentlemen, if your church isn't preaching Christ Jesus and they're busy with fundraisers and, 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 and money grabbing, ladies and gentlemen, shake the dust off your feet and worship God in spirit and in truth. God is looking for those who will worship him and will worship him in, in spirit and in truth. 
truth. Second Chronicles 16, 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts are perfect toward him. Let God prove himself just like the Witherspoons are experiencing right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The presence of God in their house and the power of God to heal and deliver. Amen. What Satan meant for harm, God is going to turn to good. Glory to God. And we give God the praise. We give God the glory. Give God the honor. Well, bless God. Well, bless God. We want you to just take a little moment to breathe. Take a break. Amen. Uh, shake hands with the person uh, next to you. Uh, husband and wife, give each other a kiss. Give one another a holy hug. Hallelujah. If you're with someone else, give them a hug. Give them a greeting and let them know Jesus loves them. Tell them Jesus loves you. And so do I. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. That's fellowship moment here at the Back to Basics online church or, or if you just by yourself just give god a high five give the holy ghost come on come on give the holy ghost a high five amen uh give the holy ghost a high five and say thank you holy ghost that you live in me ladies and gentlemen god does not want you feeling alone or left out or neglected he promised never to leave us nor forsake us amen you may be on the top of the himalaya mountains all by yourself Amen. Amen. But you're not alone. He's standing right there waiting to hear your prayer. The Holy Ghost is standing right there and 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 he lives inside of every believer. So you're never alone. Never alone. Never alone. Stir up the gift in you. Stir up the gift in you. Start singing praises, praise songs. When you feel lonely, start singing praise song. No, never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Uh, uh, just start singing a praise song. Uh, make a melody unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You cast those devils out in the name of Jesus. You lift up the name of Jesus. The devil can't stand it when you start praising God. When you start praising God, the devil can't stand it. You start praising God, stir up the gift in you and offer God some praise. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we bless God. We thank God. And we're going to get ready for a powerful word that God gave me for you. A powerful word. Turn in your Bible to Nehemiah chapter one or download on your smartphone. Nehemiah chapter one. And uh, for those of you who are using smartphones or computers, and you may not have a Bible, you can download www.biblegateway.com. www.biblegateway.com. And you can get the Word of God in all of the translations. All of the translations. You can get the Bible in any translation you, you desire. And so that's a good download for you. So let's turn now in our Bibles. To Nehemiah chapter 1. And our subject today is entitled, Let Us Rise Up and Build. Ladies and gentlemen, let us rise up and build. This message is going to change your life, ladies and gentlemen. This message is going to change the course of this nation when people hear it. This net message is going to change Kenya. It's going to change Tanzania. By the way, we give a shout out to our Tanzan Tanzanian uh, graduates who will graduate from the Back to Basic School of Ministry next Saturday. Uh, and we give a shout out to Dr. Bill Abraham and all of our Tanzanian graduates. We thank God that Bishop Elijah can attend that graduation in Tanzania. Praise God. Let's look at the word of God. Father God, bless this uh, message. Anoint this message. Minister to your people. <clears throat> and we thank you, Father, and bless you and honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Look at the word of God. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. And it came to pass 
in the month Kislu, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace, meaning it was the 20th year of this king that uh, Nehemiah served, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captives, captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. So ladies and gentlemen, we find the, the, the um, writer Nehemiah, who is a slave in Babylon, and he's one of the children of those who were taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar when Jerusalem fell. And now we find Nehemiah 70 years, 70 years after the captivity, when God had declared that the Jews can now go home back to their own country, their punishment was over. God had punished them for 70 years as captives in a strange land. And now we find that at the time of Nehemiah's writing, two waves of Jews had left Babylon to go back to Jerusalem. And Ezra had gone to rebuild the temple. Zerubbabel uh, had gone with the specific orders from God to rebuild the temple. And two waves of Jews had already gone back. But Nehemiah, who is serving in Babylon as the cupbearer to the king, the best job in the kingdom, he was the king's cupbearer. He tasted the king's food and wine before the king ate. So if anybody wanted to poison the king, Nehemiah would die first. But it was a good job, good paying job, good paying position, dangerous. And so he had to be prayed up. But he had a great burden on his heart, a concern. And when his brother, Hanani, who had come back to Babylon from Jerusalem, Hanani had been one who had left during the second wave when the when the um, Jews had been uh, released from captivity, his brother came back to Babylon to visit Nehemiah. And Nehemiah asked, what is the state of our people in Jerusalem? And Hanani says, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. So, so he told Nehemiah, the people aren't doing too well. They, they ain't doing too good. <clears throat> the walls of the city are burned down. There's no protection. The neighboring tribes are raiding them, raping the women, killing the children, robbing the people. There's no protection. The walls are broken down and the gates of the city are burned with fire. And so Nehemiah has a burden because God has released his people to go back to Jerusalem. And even in Jerusalem, they have no protection. And here is Nehemiah some 800 miles away in Babylon, concerned about his people. You know, ladies and gentlemen, when you have a concern about others, God can reach that situation. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are per perfect toward him. When you show concern for the witherspoons in Chester and you ask God to help them, helps on the way with the spoons. When you ask, when you show a concern for the uh, Turkana people in Western Kenya, Bishop Elijah, and you pray to God, God will send help to the Turkana people. When you show concern, Bishop Bill Abraham, for the people of Tanzania, God will send help. Ladies and gentlemen, when you show concern for the people in Houston, Texas, and the people in the path of this devastating hurricane, God will show up, ladies and gentlemen, amen. When you concern, show concern 
for about the number of people who are being uh, 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 ridiculously shot down in places like Chester, Pennsylvania, uh, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Houston, Texas, San, uh, uh, San Francisco, when people are being gunned down like dogs and you call upon the name of the Lord, God will show up, ladies and gentlemen. When you show a concern about immigrants in this nation and how they're being unjustly treated, when you show concern about uh, 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 racism on the rise in America and you turn to the name of the Lord and call upon him, God will show up. Come on, somebody, and give God the praise. When we cry unto the Lord, God hears. And so Nehemiah fasted and prayed. He fasted and prayed. And he was the king's cupbearer. He was not allowed. His job did not allow him to have a frown on his face. If he had a frown on his face or he was not smiling, he could be put to death by the king. And so the king noticed. The king noticed uh, Nehemiah's countenance. Nehemiah wasn't smiling all the time. And ladies and gentlemen, there are times when you, you can't smile. There are times when you genuinely hurt. There are times when as believers we genuinely hurt. There are times uh, 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 when we, we might have to lose a leg. We might have to lose an arm. We might have to lose our job. Uh, your your wife might walk out on you. Your husband might walk out on you. Your children might kick you to the curb. Uh, 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 and there are times, Pastor, when they try to kick you out of your own church. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't smile all the time. But glory to God. Hallelujah. There's joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy, joy. There's joy on the inside of us because the Bible says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. The Bible says, when the enemy comes upon us like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. And so the king uh, did not put Nehemiah to death, but he said, what's wrong? How can I help you? And Nehemiah explained the situation in Jerusalem. And the king said, what do you want me to do? And Nehemiah said, make me to be the governor. Send me there. Give me the materials and the man manpower. And I will go and I'll build the walls around Jerusalem. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not talking about walls to keep the immigrants out. We're not talking about the walls to just keep a certain people comfortable. We're talking about walls to protect the inhabitants. Ladies and gentlemen, in this great country of ours, we got all kinds of people, black, white, yellow, brown, red. We've got people hurting. We've got old people, young people. We've got people who know Jesus and don't know Jesus, but they all have a right to be protected. Ladies and gentlemen, and 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 uh, all kinds of people. We've got the sick. We've got the, the 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 lame. We've got the blind. We've got the crippled. We've got the deaf. We've got the dumb. And we have a responsibility. Yes, we are our brother's keeper. Cain said, "Am I my brother's keeper?" Yes, we are our brother's keeper. And we've got to build up a certain kind of wall to protect them. Not a wall just to keep a certain number of people out. Not a wall to subdue a certain a group of people, but we've got to build up a wall, a spiritual wall. We've got to build up a spiritual wall, ladies and gentlemen, to protect all people. You've got to build up a spiritual wall in Kenya. You've got to build up a spiritual wall in Tanzania because people are hurting all around the world. We've got to build up a spiritual wall around North Korea so that the eyes of their leaders will be open that war is not the answer. Why should millions perish? Because Dum Dum wants to shoot off some rockets. Come on, somebody. And so the king sent Nehemiah for a season, for a certain number of years, actually, it was 12 years, and made him governor of Jerusalem and sent him to build the walls of Jerusalem. And we look at the scripture 
in verse 9 of chapter 2. And the word says, Then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king has sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, in every town, in every village, in every community, in every nation, there are Sanballats, there are Geshams, there are Ons, there are Tobias. They do not want God's people to be protected. They would do everything they can to destroy people. You've got them sitting up in churches right now. People who attend every Sunday. Some of them are sitting on the official board. They do not have the welfare of the people in their mind. They want to protect their own vested interests. And they look down on others. And they will do all they can to put people down. Verse 11. So I came to Jerusalem and I was there three days, Nehemiah said. And I rose in the night, I and some few men with me, neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. So Nehemiah went out and observed the situation by night, and he didn't tell anybody what he was there for. He didn't even tell the leaders in Jerusalem why he was there. He just Observe the situation. Ladies and gentlemen, there are times when you got to get off Facebook, stop the rhetoric. Uh, don't please do not send me any pass this on. And, and if it's not right, I ain't passing it on. I don't care who you are. I'm not passing on your messages of hatred, your messages of bitterness, your messages of criticism. I get sick and tired of seeing so called Christians on Facebook and in the social media passing on nonsense. It's pure nonsense. You need to repent. If you don't have anything to say, shut up. Shut up. If that offends you, too bad. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything. I'm getting sick and tired of you. A lot of, a lot of you Negroes, amen, uh, uh, keep throwing pictures of Obama up on, on, the, on the Facebook and, and putting down President Trump. Our president now is, is Donald Trump. Our president is Donald Trump, like it or lump it. Our president is Donald Trump. You can't bring Obama back. Ladies and gentlemen, wake up. Obama did more than any president in the history of this nation to sell this nation out to the Arabs, to the Muslims. He sold us out. Wake up, ladies and gentlemen. Church leaders, wake up, ladies and gentlemen. And then I'm getting sick and tired. I'm getting sick and tired of, 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 of people falling for every every movement that goes along one of the movements now i'm going to uh, boycott the nfl cuz cuz uh, uh, uh i don't i'm not going to stand for the national anthem ladies and gentlemen let me lay this out here i stand for the national anthem you know why because i served in the us army as a green beret i saw many of my friends who who later got killed in Vietnam. Many of my friends, many people I didn't even know got killed because they believed it was an honor to stand for the national anthem and to uh, 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 follow the flag that has been designated as a symbol of the greatness of this nation. Ladies and gentlemen, what sickens me is all these uh, non-military wimps and punks who never put on a uniform and have no loyalty to their nation. And because you don't have any loyalty, you're help, no loyalty, you're helping to pull this nation down. Now, you don't have to accept what I say, but I'm going to salute the flag. I'm going to stand up for the national anthem. I ain't boycotting football because I like football. I don't think that's my cause to take a knee when the national anthem is played. I think my cause is to take a knee at the name of Jesus and pray for this sick nation. That's where I am. So back to Nehemiah. Hallelujah. You can chew on that a little bit if you want to. Back to Nehemiah. Verse 13. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well, and to the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Then I went on to the gate of the fountain, and to the king's pool, 
but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. Then I went up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall. Verse 16, and the rulers knew not whether I went or what I did. Neither had I as yet told it to the Jews. Then I said, listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. America, you need to wake up and listen to this verse. You, uh, you demonstrators out there, you haters, you demonstrators, you, you white folks who hate black folks, you black folks who hate white folks, you need to stand up and listen to this word, ladies and gentlemen, because as you're going at it, as you're hating one another, you haters in the church, you haters in the pulpit, you need to stand up on this word, listen to this word, because while you're feeding into hate, you're taking the nation down. You are taking this nation down and you're taking other nations down because you you promote hatred. You promote violence. You're holding ill will against your neighbor. But look at Nehemiah in verse 17 of chapter two. Then said I unto them, you see the distress that we are in. How Jerusalem lieth waste and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem that we may, may be no more a reproach. Nehemiah said to them, look, you see the state we're in. You're fighting with Sanballat. You're fighting with Geshem. You're fighting with Tobiah. You're fighting with On. You're fighting your own family. You're fighting one another. You, you're, 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 you're hating blacks and blacks. You're hating whites and everybody's trying to kill a cop and, and this and that. And you're fighting one another. There's so much divisiveness and all that garbage you're putting on Facebook and, and all that rhetoric and all that this meanness and nastiness and pass this on. Send this to the people on your contact list. Stop it. Stop it. Nehemiah said, we're in this condition because of our sins. And because of the sins of our fathers, we're all in this together, ladies and gentlemen. The sad thing is so many of you are caught up in the madness and in the hatred and in the bitterness. You're choosing sides. Your eyes are not on Jesus. And I'm talking about born again believers whose eyes are not on Jesus. You're backslidden. And if you don't watch it, you're going to perish. You're going to perish. If you don't repent, you're going to perish. You can be born again, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking, tongue talking. But if you hate your neighbor, if you hate blacks, if you hate whites, you ain't going to get into heaven. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not deceived. He's not mocked. Ma, I don't care how much you speak in tongues. I don't care how many churches you have built. I don't care how many TV programs you've produced. I don't care how many books you've written. I don't care how many CDs you'll produce. If you've got bitterness in your heart against a white, a, a white people or you've got bitterness in your heart against black people, ain't no way you're going to get to heaven. You're just helping to pull this nation down. And you need to repent. Bishop, you need to repent. If you're telling your church members uh, to do this and to do that, uh, vote for so-and-so because he's black, uh, and, and the white candidate's a better candidate. Bishop, you need to shut up. You're pulling this nation down. So Nehemiah says, you see the distress we're in? Why well, you're bitter with this person, you're hating on that group. You don't like Mexicans. You don't like Puerto Ricans. You don't like blacks. You don't like Irish. You don't like this. We're all in this mess. Can't you see the distress we're in? Nehemiah had to open up their eyes to let them see the distress they were in so that they could work together and seek the Lord. And so he says, come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem. Let us rise up and build. Verse 18, then I told them of the hand of my God, hallelujah, which was good upon me as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Every now and then, and then God's got to send a, mess, a messenger. 
a holy bold soldier to waken the people, to blow the trumpet in Zion, to sound the alarm in God's holy mountain, to blow the shofar. Somebody's got to blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm in God's holy mountain. Somebody's got to be like Gideon, blow the shofar. Nehemiah said uh, to the people, let's rise up and build. Some worked with shovels and spades. Some worked with swords in their hands. And he told the man with the shofar, the, the trumpet blower, you stick close to me so that when the enemy comes, when you blow the trumpet, everybody knows to rise. We need trumpet blowers in America. We need trumpet blowers in your nation. Come, let us rise up and build. Don't you see the state we're in? The ship is sinking. The ship is sinking while you're hating, while you're playing church, while you're enjoying Women's Day and Men's Day, while you're busy making money, while you're selling your dinners and your raffle tickets, while you're playing bingo, the ship is sinking, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody ought to blow the trumpet. Hey, we're going to continue this next week. We're going to continue this next week, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have time to finish it all, but I just want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Nehemiah said we're in this shape because of the sins of our fathers and our own sins. Romans 6, 1 and 2 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer in it? This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I'm so glad that you paid attention to this message. Let the word work mightily in you. Ask God, Lord, what can I do to bring peace and harmony in this nation? Lord, what can I do to encourage others to get back to you? What can I do to get the church to wake up and do what is right? What can I do to bring peace in my home? What can I do to bring peace in my community? Praise God. Praise God. Man, I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I'm fired up, and I thank God. Get fired up. Get fired up. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm in God's holy mountain. Praise God. And if you're not saved, you ought to get saved, ladies and gentlemen. You ought to get saved today. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And you shall be saved, not behave, and you shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Pray this prayer with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sins. I confess my sins, and I repent. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you raised him from the dead. I want Jesus to come into my life and be my Savior and Lord. I receive him now by faith in Jesus' name. Well, if you have prayed that prayer, you're saved. And now you find a church where they preach Jesus Christ. Find a pastor to pastor you. In the meantime, you continue to hang out with us at the Back to Basics online church. You can call me any day of the week, anytime you want, 404 404- 205-1101. Send me an email, Leroy Carter69 at yahoo.com. Uh, or or send me a tweet at BTBMIN. Or watch up see the tapes, uh, the archive tapes, every tape we make, every video we make. It's available at www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com. Or watch my Facebook page. Get in touch. We want to pray for you. We want to encourage you. Amen. We're going to sign off now, but we're going to keep the the chat window open. And uh, for those who want to call in personally, unplug your phones, unblock your phones, unmute your phones. We got a few minutes 
to share with you. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. We look forward to seeing you next week as we continue. Let us rise up and build.